Hi, I'm Jamie Ruby from Sci-Fi Vision. Thanks for talking to me, both of you. I really enjoyed the uh, first four episodes that we've seen so far. Um, so can you ta start by talking about how much the costumes inform the choices you make as performers? We'll go Jessica, then Tom. Yeah, the costumes were a huge, huge part of it. But uh, Karis, our costume designer, was incredibly detailed. Nothing was, you know, Velcroed on. It was, you were stitched in and hook and eyes. And I think particularly for the women, it was, um, you know, it could be quite trying because <laughs> you're just, it's so heavy. Two costume uh, assistants had to carry my costume to the trailer because one person couldn't hold them all. And that was all going on me. So it was just, you know, it was nuts. Um, but uh, I remember the first day I walked on set, I walked past this little girl who was um, playing, a, she was an extra in, in it. And uh, she literally gasped when I walked past. And I kind of, I was a bit focused on the lines and what I was about to do. And I forgot like the vision that Bart had created was really special. Right, right, Tom, probably not quite as much for you, but. My answer is just so much more base than Jess's beautiful, eloquent answer, but costumes always inform your character. Um, but I had to deal with a cod piece, which I've never worn before. So. Distracting. Mm. It was very, it was very distracting. Do you remember the first week, Jess? It was very <laughs> distracting and kind of upstaged me constantly. It would kind of walk into a room about 30 seconds before I did. So getting used to that <laughs> took a while, but definitely, to be honest, informed Thomas's character because he's someone that is definitely driven by his uh, groin. And, um, and so, yeah, I just kind of like ended up um, using that and kind of just flaunting it a lot, which I think was very in line with Thomas's uh, 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 vibe, should we say. <laughs> so how do you both approach playing like historical characters like this compared to like a different type of role? I guess um, I, I read I read around it a lot. Um, and I, I think, to be honest, the loads of it came from Anya's script because she was so uh, clever and detailed in how she wrote these characters. Every single one of them is really three dimensional. Mm. And it's just so exciting playing someone where the state where the stakes are so high, I guess. Um, so you've got to kind of balance it out with your research and sort of living it in the moment, I guess. All right, Tom. To be honest, I just absolutely echo that. Yeah, I, I read a lot, uh, you know, as much as possible. Not there's not a huge amount on Thomas Seymour, to be honest. Um, but Anya's scripts were just so so brilliant so complex so nuanced that those really were the launching pad and I just wanted to do her writing and her interpretation of Thomas justice and so yeah lots of research but it just kind of sits and vibrates in you but actually the real meat is definitely the, the script the brilliant script. Were you both familiar kind of with the story and the time period I know this one's a little different because it's you know, her younger years, but how familiar were you? Um, well, you know, I'm, we're both British, so uh, we probably have had the Tudor history shoved down our throats from before we could eat. You know, it's, it's so kind of present. Um, but to be honest, this is a part of the history that I, I didn't know anything about, really. Um, and I can't believe it, you know, there's so much uh, out there about um, Elizabeth I, one of the most iconic characters in history, but nothing really about this period in her life, which I think is so informative of the person that she became. And it was a real honor to kind of get into that and get a chance to tell that part of her story. All right. Well, thank you so much, both of you. I appreciate it. I'm looking forward to seeing more. Thanks, <laughs> cool. Jamie. Thanks. Have a good day. Bye-bye.